Item number SCP-6169 Security Level 2 Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class Vlam Risk Class Notice Special Containment Procedures SCP-6169 is to be contained 50 kilometers north of Site-19 on a farm owned by Stanley's Produce. Note, a foundation front company. Documents which contain redacted information or information requiring specific clearance to access are not to be brought within 2 kilometers of this enclosure. Test proposals may be submitted to the head researcher on site. Currently, head researcher Diana Nicola. Update. 18th of March, 2009. Personnel assigned to SCP-6169 are encouraged to interact with it on a daily basis. Acceptable forms of interaction include, but are not limited to, feeding, grooming, medical examinations, testing, etc. Update. 27th of March, 2014. Daily interactions are to be of a playful manner and to be carried out for a total of one hour per day at minimum. Description SCP-6169 is a brown male alpaca, physically indistinguishable from non-anomalous specimens. Its behavior, when not in the presence of humans, does not deviate from the norm of its species. However, if a human is within a 20 meter line of sight from SCP-6169 and not maintaining visual contact, it will exhibit a series of activities designed to attract the person's attention. Note: Most common such actions are jumping, running, and making vocalizations indicative of joy. For as long as visual and or physical contact is maintained, SCP-6169 adopts and amical behavior. SCP-6169's anomalous effect manifests when sensed material is brought within 1 kilometer, update 300 meters, update 100 meters, update 15 meters of it. See Addendum 2, which causes the sent material to have all of its redacted information uncensored. The anomaly seems to be able to recognize the intent to office great information, for instance, Text that has the sections intentionally hidden or expunged will return to the unscented state, but writing upon which ink has been accidentally spilled will be left unaltered. Falsified information is, likewise, unaffected by SCP-6169. All affected materials return to the censored state once removed from the anomaly's area of effect. SCP-6169 has been noted to affect digital and physical text, as well as audio and video media. Copies of censored materials are also affected. Furthermore, in the case of electronic text documents, information requiring a certain clearance level to access is also considered censored. In this case, any input prompt awaiting appropriate credentials will be rendered inactive and a simple depicting an alpaca displayed alongside it. Recovery On 11th of March, 2009, Foundation agents embedded in several television service providers received reports of an evening comedy show containing uncensored strong language while being rated as TVPG. While such events are not unheard of, reports originated exclusively in the town of Mount Pleasant, New York, with the program being broadcast nationally. After ascertaining that profanity was indeed censored in the original recording, the Foundation was notified of a potential anomaly within the area. At the scene, SCP-6169 was located atop a chalk drawing of a person apparently participating in protest. Said person's eyes and mouth were obscured by black bars, and they were holding a pancard, featuring what appeared to be similarly obscured text. Preliminary on-site testing determined that the anomalous traits originated from the alpaca, with the drawing being completely ordinary. Interviews with locals revealed no eyewitnesses, and the location where the drawing and the object were found was not covered by any security cameras. As such, the drawing was removed 
an SCP-6169 said to be transported to Site-19. Due to the low number of people exposed to affected TV media, a cover story stating negligence in selecting the broadcast version was deemed a sufficient follow-up measure. En route to Site-19, its ability to affect text documents was made apparent by the reports of restricted information being accessible to personnel lacking appropriate clearance. As such, containment at Site-19 was deemed unfeasible, and a nearby farm was purchased by the Foundation Front Company for the purpose of containing SCP-6169. Addendum 1. Several days after initial containment, during which time SCP-6169 has not interacted with personnel, the object displayed loss of appetite and generally poor vitality. During a medical examination, these symptoms were partially alleviated, with health improving gradually as the procedure carried on. Due to these circumstances, as well as highly social behavior, it was theorized that SCP-6169 requires human interaction as a secondary form of sustenance. This theory has been proven by daily interactions with personnel and the subject, which kept its health at consistently improved levels. Containment procedures has been updated accordingly. Addendum 2. Project Lumos. Level 4 claims required. Bah. A proposal was made by researcher Nicola to use SCP-6169 as a means of acquiring information from documents recovered from certain groups of interest. The following email exchange occurred. Date, 2nd of April, 2012. From researcher Diana Nicola to Dr. Tilda D. Moose, Site-19 Director. Subject, SCP-6169 Proposal. Director Moose, during its long years of activity, the Foundation has contained numerous world-ending threats, outrage horrors, and perhaps unsurprisingly even guards. Looking at them, some of the most risky, but at the same time crucial operations are carried out to learn more about the anomalies so that we can contain them more reliably in this regard. Every bit of the extra information can save valuable resources, including human lives. Before working with SCP-6169, I was assigned to an artifact recovered from a certain group of interest. While the object was self simple enough, the recovered documentation was nearly useless because of all the expunged information. This is to be expected. After all, the Foundation is using the same mechanism because it's effective but I believe we can avoid further such difficulties. I propose using SCP-6169 to extract information from documents recovered from groups of interest. Its anomalous effect has been shown to also apply to copies, so there is no need to list the original documents. The provided information could save us days, if not weeks of experimenting, to find out proper containment procedures, not to mention diminishing the risk undercover foundation agents are exposed to. I hope these potential benefits are enough to make this worth considering. Regards, Researcher Diana Nicola. Date, 2nd of April, 2012. From Dr. Tilda D. Moose, Site-19 Director. To Researcher Diana Nicola. Subject. Regarding SCP-6169 proposal, researcher Nicola, the suggestion sounds promising, but unless there's a significant benefit, risks posed by using anomalies are too high. In this case, however, the potential benefit warrant at least a trial. As Providence would have had it, he just got our hands on something that he could test on. I will prove one experiment in this regard, depending on the results. We might move forward with your proposal. Site Director Tilda Moose The experiment was approved by Site Director Moose on 5th of April, 2012. On route to the anomalous containment site, agents have noted that the anomalous effects radius has been reduced to 300 meters, 30% of the initially observed affected radius. Note, further tests have revealed a steady decline in the affected radius albeit at a slower rate. 
for the current theory concerning SCP-6169 origin, as well as the weakening of its effect, consult Addendum 3. The object of the experiment was a copy of a document acquired in a raid on a Chaos Insurgency base, featuring heavy redaction to the point of rendering 90% of the information illegitimate. Upon exposure to SCP-6169's effect, all redacted information became legible. However, two personnel were incapacitated by the effect of an embedded memetic agent. The additional text retrieved, however, provided vital information on a raid planned by CI operatives on the Foundation site, giving security personnel ample time to prepare for interception. Researcher Nicola has been commended for a proposal. Appointed head researcher in charge of SCP-6169 and given level 4 clearance. In light of this effect, security has been strengthened about SCP-6169 as it would pose a significant information risk should it be acquired by the other groups of interest. Further such procedures may be undertaken should the need arise. With Site Director Moose's approval under code name Project Lumos. The codified documents are to be viewed only by personnel with high memetic resistance in order to avoid further casualties. Addendum 3 Project Lumos Update Level 4 Clearance Required Bah! Starting with 2013, Project Lumos operations increased in frequency, reaching 5 procedures per week. At this stage, SCP-6169 began to show signs of fatigue for extended periods of time, as well as decreased appetite. These symptoms are averted by performing the numerous operations in the entity's immediate vicinity, accounting for the entity's need for human attention. On the 24th of March, 2014, following a particularly extensive Project Numerous operation, SCP-6169 collapsed in its enclosure. An emergency medical examination indicated stable vitals and attributed the event to stress and exhaustion. Despite following previous interaction guidelines, the specimen did not regain consciousness until three days later. The increased stress was attributed to the overuse of its anomalous effect. Thus, head researcher Nicola contacted Psych Director Moose regarding possible improvements on Project Lumos. Date, 25th of March. 2014, from Head Researcher Diana Nicola to Dr. Tilda D. Moose, Site 19 Director, Subject, Project Lumos Concerns. Director Moose, throughout the last two years, Project Lumos has grown from a simple proposal made by a small time researcher to an important component of the Foundation Information Network. And for this, I must express my gratitude towards you, Site Director. Without your faith in my idea, I couldn't have contributed to the Foundation in such a significant way. All this being said, I do have some concerns related to our key instrument, SCP-6169 itself. As you have probably heard by now, the object has collapsed during the last operation, seemingly due to stress and exhaustion. As a direct overseer of everything SCP-6169 related, I can confirm that its health has gradually worsened as numerous operations increase in frequency, decreased vitality, occasionally missing its feeding times, irregular sleeping schedule, etc. If we keep going like this, I fear we might eventually lose the one thing that makes it all of this work, which would be, to say the least, unfortunate. It is therefore my recommendation that we space out such activities to approximately one per week with regular medical checkups. Regards, Head Researcher Diana Nicola. Date, 25th of March, 2014. From Dr. Tilda D. Moose, Site 19 Director. To Head Researcher Diana Nicola. Subject, regarding Project Lumus concerns. Head Researcher Nicola. I appreciate the kind words, but don't forget that this was your proposal, meaning you should take responsibility for its consequences. One numerous operation per week means 52 per year, 
Considering the amount of documents we retrieve from other groups, this is not enough. Yes, it is better than none at all, but looking at the pace the Foundation has been moving, we need at least three times as many operations in the same time frame. I understand your concerns, and losing this object would certainly hurt the Foundation, but we need to do better. You need to do better. You're a competent head researcher, Diana. I trusted you with the project then, and I trust you'll find a solution now. But I cannot approve of this suggestion. Find a better option. Don't make me regret my decision. Site Director Tilda Moose. Date, 27th of March, 2014. From head researcher Diana Nicola. To Dr. Tilda D. Moose, Site 19 Director. Subject regarding... Project Lumos Concerns Director Moose, you're right. In hindsight, that was a poor suggestion, especially coming from me. In an attempt to remedy this, I have spent the past days trying to find the mechanism behind SCP-6169's energy intake, hoping to be able to compensate for its fatigue and stress. I cannot say I uncovered everything there is to know about it, but I found something we can make use of at least. Studying the time frame surrounding its recovery date, I stumbled upon a surge in alpaca-related internet memes on social media platforms. Most of these are part of an online anti-censorship movement, criticizing policies adopted by certain countries that limited the citizens' freedom of speech. This, along with the circumstances of its recovery, is why I think the movement itself has some connection to our anomaly, as these posts dropped in frequency, so did the anomalous effects inch the minute, furthering the connection between the two. My theory is that SCP-6169 feeds on positive attention, more specifically as we found out during its containment at our facility, its health depends on the attention it physically receives, while the radius of its effect depends on the attention it receives as an online phenomenon. The latter is easily taken care of. Since the wave of alpaca related memes has mostly died off, printing a few relevant social media posts and displaying them around its containment site would prove sufficient attention to the anomaly's conceptual aspect. With that out of the way, I will focus on the physical aspect. When he first contained this object, we noticed that it needed human interaction, and we adapted. We thought any kind of attention would be acceptable as we decide to stay emotionally detached, as we normally do. Everything went as expected after that until we started working on Project Lumos, or rather until the project grew to the scale of multiple operations per week. We kept the daily interactions between operations, but we soon found out that we were giving the anomaly the wrong food. It needed positive attention, pleasant feelings, not just emotionless proximity to humans. This is where we can improve, if we want to keep the alpaca alive. My new proposal is as follows. Operations related to Project Numus should be carried out at most three times per week, and daily interactions are to be explicitly of a pleasant, occasionally playful manner. I realize this is in contraction with the Foundation's usual code and methods, but we cannot afford to lose SCP-6169 and this project. Regards, Head Researcher Diana Nicola. Date, 27th of March, 2014. From Dr. Tilda D. Moose, Site 19 Director. To Head Researcher Diana Nicola. Subject, regarding Project Lumos concerns. Head Researcher Nicola. If you believe this to be the best course of action we can take, then so be it. Updates approved. Site Director Tilda Moose. Following Site Director Moose's approval, the containment procedures and Project Lumus protocol had been updated accordingly. Post update SCP 6169's physical health and rates of effect have been made stable.